Welcome back. Um, in section 4.2, uh, we're going to talk about what derivatives tell us. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about the first derivative and second derivative tests and how we find where things are increasing, decreasing, concave up and concave down. In this specific problem, problem number 17, we'd like to find the intervals on which the function f of x equals 4 minus x squared is increasing and decreasing. Okay, so how we find where a function is increasing and decreasing is the very first thing we have to do is we have to find the critical points for the function. And to find any critical points, we have to take the derivative of the function and say where is that function equal to zero or where is it undefined. So let's start by taking the derivative of this function and finding critical points for that function. So if I take the derivative of this function, I get f prime of x is equal to uh, simply the derivative of 4 is 0. The derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. So that's my derivative. And what I want to know is where is this derivative equal to 0 or undefined? It can't be undefined because there's no bottom of the fraction. So it can just be equal to 0. So if I set this equal to 0, I get that 0 is equal to negative 2x. And so x would have to be equal to 0. And this is my critical point, Okay, is x is equal to 0. Now, once we know what the critical point is, then what I want to do is I want to make a number line. And I want to put all of my critical points on that number line. In this case, I only have the one critical point at x equals 0. So I say, uh, this is my x equals 0 put a zero on here. And now what I want to do is I want to just test point on either side of zero to see do I get a positive value or do I get a negative value when I plug in something on either side of zero to the first derivative. I'm not plugging it into the original function. I'm plugging it into the first derivative. So if I take a number bigger than zero, it doesn't matter which one. I just need to take one. Uh, and so let's take the number one. Plug it into the first derivative. If I look at f prime of one, well, I plug it in and I get minus two times one, which is negative two. And specifically what I care about is that it's negative. Now, if I plug in one and I get a negative value, then if I plugged in two, I'd also get a negative value. Why is that? Because f prime is continuous, and so it can't become positive without crossing through 0 somewhere. And I know that the only place that it's 0 is at 0. So all the things over here are negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write in negatives above that region to remind myself that if I plugged in any value over here, I'd get a negative value. Similarly, if I plugged in something over here like negative 1, then I'd get negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2, specifically positive 2. And so I know that everything over here in this region must be positive. Now, uh, what this gives us is it tells us where is our function increasing and where is our function decreasing, because we know from a theorem in calculus that if the first derivative is positive, then my function is increasing, or it's going up from left to right. Okay, If f prime is negative, then it's decreasing, or it's going down from left to right. All right, So I know that on this whole interval from negative infinity to 0, this function is increasing. And from 0 to positive infinity, this function is decreasing. So I want to write that down. So f is increasing on the interval from negative infinity all the way to 0. And f is decreasing on the interval from 0 to positive infinity. And 
and that's my answer.